Movies in short here. Today, we'll run through the plot outline of a 2021 action adventure movie called The Ice Road. Sit back, relax and enjoy. Miners at Kaka Diamond Mine in northern Manitoba drill deep underground. Rene Lampard checks the methane sensors and finds they are not functioning. Shift supervisor Magdens has no idea why. He stresses that they must be in working order at all times. As a truck travels along the ice road, an explosion knocks it sideways and it rolls down the cliff. Rene informs the miners that they have hit the methane pocket and Mankin shouts, everyone out. The miners run through the exit above ground. Followed by a fireball. General Manager Sickle rushes out of his office. Mike McCann drives his rig in North Dakota to meet his brother at work. He stops and enters to see Gertie, who is an Iraq war veteran suffering from PTSD and dysphagia, being taunted. Gertie is unable to formulate language due to damage to specific portions of his brain. Johansson asks Mike how it feels to be best friends with a retard. He's my brother, Johansson. And I told you never to call him that. After he knocks him out, Mike and Gertie are both fired. He tells Gertie to pack his belongings and to take Skeeter, his pet rat, as they leave. Mike drives Gertie to the VA medical center, telling him they will look after him. Dr. Talbot meets him, reassuring him that the tests won't take long. If he qualifies for rehabilitation, they will arrange housing for him. At Katka, Deputy Minister O'Toole instructs Tager, VP Operations, and Sickle to ensure that no one enters any of the tunnels. Tully, the mine safety supervisor, approaches Jim Goldenrod who is a seasoned big rig driver. He tells him Tunnel 6 collapsed at Kaka Mine. They need an 18-foot gas wellhead and 300 feet of pipe delivered there in under 30 hours. Goldenrod agrees to help if he can find drivers and a mechanic. He informs Tully that the authorities need to reopen the ice road. Back at the medical center, Mike is very angry to see Gertie heavily medicated without his permission. First, kiss my Irish ass. The press will love another story about how the VA overprescribes opioids to America's heroes. Mike leaves taking Gertie with him. At the gas station, Mike receives an emergency alert requesting ice road drivers. They hear a news report about the twin explosions at the Kotka mine where eight miners were killed, with 26 unaccounted for. Goldenrod bails Tendu out of jail and they discuss the explosion. Her brother Cody works at the mine. She agrees to drive a rig on the ice road to Winnipeg to transport the wellheads. Mike and Gertie meet with Goldenrod, who asks why he hasn't worked regularly in the last eight years. Mike explains that he takes care of his brother. Goldenrod asks Gertie to bring his toolbox and takes him to the workshop. He instructs him to pull the rocker arm shaft as a test of his abilities, saying he will time him. Goldenrod is very impressed and hires them. Tentu arrives, parks the rig and throws him the keys as she joins them. Back at the mine, the trapped miners hear Morse code. Sickle instructs Fred to tell them that they are going to cap the methane with wellheads, before they blast. Miner Cody translates saying that the wellheads will arrive as soon as possible. In the mine office, Tager and Sickle discuss the difficulties of getting the wellheads to Kotka. Back at Goldenrods, he explains to the drivers that the $200,000 payment will be split four ways. If one of them doesn't make it, their portion will be divided between the others. Tom Varney, who will travel with them, is employed by the Kotka Insurance Group. He will ride with Tentu in the Black Rig. Mike puts Skeeter up front as Gertie does a last-minute check. Goldenrod says if they take the old Manitonka Bridge they will reach Kotka inside the miner's oxygen window. They proceed along the ice road which has been open for their journey. At Kotka, the miners sit quietly to preserve oxygen. Mankins estimates they have 26 hours left. As they drive through the night, Goldenrod is concerned about the sunshine melting the ice in the morning. Mike says the Red Kenworth rig is a fine ride. They might get one just like it. What do we name our truck, Gertie? Truck, truck, truck. Goldenrod comes to a stop as the engine ceases. Mike and Tentu reverse back to tow him behind them. They attach the nylon pulleys at the rear so the rigs can sway, while Gertie runs diagnostics. As they try to repair the rig, the ice beneath the trailer breaks. Goldenrod's leg is trapped as the rig goes through the ice, dragging him with it. He convinces Tentu to sever the strap attached to him and drowns. They tie the rigs together. They increase their speed as the ice continues to crack at a rapid rate. Gertie and Varney stand on the running boards ready to jump off if the ice breaks. The trucks fishtail and roll over, stopping the pressure wave as the weight is displaced evenly. At Kotka, Cody deciphers a new message saying the mission to deliver the wellheads has failed. Back on the ice road Varney suggests they go back. Mike points to the oncoming storm. When Varney tells Mike he is suspicious of Tentu, he questions her regarding her history with Goldenrod. They accuse her of tampering with his rig as revenge for him firing her previously. 
She pulls a gun on them and Gertie disarms her and ties her up. As they work to right the rigs, Mike makes a call to confirm that Tentu's brother, Cody Mantooth, does work at the mine. Underground at Katka, Mankins approaches Cody and Rene saying they need to decrease their numbers before they run out of oxygen. Cody tells the miners and asks them to vote for who gets to make it. Mankins coldly tells them that some of them won't survive. As Mike checks the equipment he sees Varney just before he locks him and Gertie in the rear of the rig. Varney climbs into the rig with Tentu, who confronts him, saying she knows he sabotaged Goldenrod's rig. He knocks her unconscious. Varney attaches dynamite to Mike's rig and lights the fuse before he drives away. Mike and Gertie use a steel pipe as a ram rod to batter their way through the heating system. They finally succeed and Mike sees the burning fuse. He climbs out and throws the dynamite seconds before it explodes. Varney hears the explosion and continues along the ice road with Tentu. As Mike and Gertie high-five, the ice cracks and the front wheels of the Kenworth subside. They work out a plan to free the rig. While winching the trailer out of the ice Mike tells him to increase the pressure. Gertie tries to warn Mike that the winch will fail, but he turns it on anyway. As Mike drives the rig out of the ice, the winch snaps causing Gertie and the trailer to fall into the icy water. After tying himself to the truck, Mike jumps in to find him. He pulls an unresponsive Gertie out of the water. Mike drags Gertie into the cab of the truck and eventually resuscitates him. He apologizes to his brother and tells Gertie they owe it to Tentu to save her as Varney planned this all along. Varney drives the rig towards Kaka. As he stops, Tentu regains consciousness and watches as Sickle joins him. Varney tells him that Mike and Gertie died in the explosion and that Tentu is still alive. Sickle tells him to drive the cab through the guardrail and say that he jumped to safety before it went over. He says the miner's oxygen will run out in three hours. Varney needs to make it seem as though their valiant rescue effort had a tragic end. Back underground, Rene demands to know what Mankins means when he says management is to blame. Cody tells him that management made them cut the sensors, assuring them there were no gas pockets so far north. They paid the miners $100 per miner, per month not to discuss it. Mankins tells Rene none of that matters as their oxygen levels are falling fast. Mike and Gertie approach the mine. Varney drives the rig to the road above. He puts Tentu into the driver's seat. He hears squeaking and opens Gertie's bag that he took before he lit the dynamite. Skeeter bites him and the brief distraction allows Tentu to attack him and throw him out of the truck. The Kaka contractors give chase and she sends out a mayday call for help. Mike responds saying they are coming up the pass. She gives her location as Varney listens in. They have two hours to reach the mine before the oxygen runs out. As she drives, she sees her fuel tank is approaching empty, as Varney disconnected her fuel equalizer. Mike and Gertie pass the snowmobiles who turn and follow them. The contractors flank the rig and jump onto the running boards, brandishing their guns and telling Mike to pull over. They break the cab windows and attack Mike. Gertie falls out of the cab with two of the attackers. They continue to fight. Mike eventually gains the upper hand by hitting the remaining man with an ice pick. After Gertie regains consciousness, he is attacked again from behind. He fights bravely as he is hit repeatedly in the head with one of the helmets. He manages to get his attacker in a chokehold and eventually kill him. Mike approaches and gets out of the cab. Well, don't just stand there. Let's go. Tenta runs out of fuel as Varney drives up behind her. She fires at him and misses. As she gives up hope, Mike and Gertie arrive with their truck, accelerating and ramming Varney's car off the cliff. Mike assures her that Gertie can fix her fuel equalizer and they siphon enough fuel for her to get to Kaka with the remaining wellhead. Varney survives and runs towards the snowmobiles, riding away to the crest of the hill. Gertie's like that commercial. Takes a lickin' but keeps on ticking. Varney creates an avalanche by burying dynamite in the snow. As Mike refuels the rig, tend to hand Skeeter to Gertie. Save my life. Give him a treat. When they hear the explosion they decide to outrun the avalanche. Mike and Gertie escape and reverse towards Tentu's rig. She has been hit by snow and wounded by a branch. He tells her that they will haul her trailer off the cliff, hook it up and drive to Kaka. 45 minutes remain until the oxygen runs out. They succeed and drive the wellhead towards Kaka. At the mine offices, Tully informs Sickles that mine safety want Rene's laptop saying the CEO will arrive in an hour. Sickles tells Tager that there is nothing in the emails to implicate them and continues to justify their actions. The trapped miners battle to breathe as their oxygen runs out. As they approach the mine, Gertie alerts Mike to Tentu's rig with Varney driving. Varney attempts to overtake them. They travel down the Manitonka Ice Road which is closed. He rams Mike repeatedly. Mike instructs Gertie to take the wheel, telling him not to stop until he reaches the mine. Mike boards Varney's rig and as they fight they both fall out of the cab. 
Bertie reaches the bridge on the road to Katka and hesitates. Tenta says she can get them across safely. She drives the rig cautiously onto the old bridge which is not designed to support the weight of the rig. Bertie uses traction pads as the wheels slip on the ice. Meanwhile, back on the ice road, Mike and Varney continue to fight. They run towards the rig and as they drive, Mike pushes him out of the door. As Mike drives away, Varney climbs back into the cab and they continue to fight until Mike knocks him out. Mike accelerates and jumps out before the rig falls through the unstable ice, killing Varney. Back at the bridge, Tenta barely makes it across before all the cables snap. Mike hears the noise and runs towards them. As they look over the edge, the rig starts to roll back. Tenta runs to the cab while Gertie battles to shut the gates. He stays until the end to try and secure the gates and gets crushed by the rig. Tenta manages to move the rig forward as Mike arrives. He holds the dying Gertie in his arms. Tenta tells him that Gertie saved the rig. Brother, mine. Mike calls him brother mine and tells him he is so sorry before Gertie dies. At the mine, Deputy Minister Atul and CEO Thomason arrive to meet Sickle and Tager. Thomason states that he does not believe that the trapped miners will get out alive as they've been without oxygen for 30 hours. Fred Ford sees the rig approaching with the wellhead and raises the emergency alarm. Sickle is shocked, thinking that they had killed everyone. The medics run to assist Tenta while Mike tells them there's no hurry to collect the lifeless Gertie. The wellhead is installed and the blasting team dispatched to Tunnel 6. The mining executives watch as the miners are brought to the surface. Tenta sees Cody and runs to greet him telling him that she had helped delivering the wellhead pointing to Mike. Rene speaks to the CEO. Thomason approaches Tager and Sickle in front of the large crowd, incredulous that they had paid the miners to work without the methane sensors. Mike steps forward and delivers his signature punch to Sickle before the two men are arrested. As the injured men are taken to the medical center, O'Toole approaches him to thank him and offer his condolences. One of the medical staff hand him the brochure of the Kenworth rig that Gertie had kept with him. Three months later, Tentu is working as a mechanic in Goldenrod's garage when Mike comes to visit her. He has bought a gold Kenworth in honor of Goldenrod. He drives as an independent contractor to deliver sporting goods. As he drives away he tends to Skeeter. His license plate reads truck 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 in honor of the name Gertie chose. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon.